Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina and I make videos about living in this tiny house on wheels and living a more intentional life. Holy cow, groceries are expensive. I'm on a pretty strict budget this year and I cannot believe how expensive groceries are even at the discount stores. So today I want to share a recipe that is going to be budget friendly and family friendly. We're going to make minestrone soup in the Instant Pot, though you don't need an Instant Pot to make this recipe. But the nice thing about this recipe is it uses low cost ingredients and basically you can throw in whatever vegetables you have in your fridge, in your cupboard that are getting to expiry date because we don't want to waste any food especially nowadays. This is a recipe you'll make over and over again because it's delicious. So let me show you what the ingredients are. So like I said, I am making this in my Instant Pot, but you don't have to. If you don't have an Instant Pot, just use a Dutch oven or a big, it's like soup size pot. I'm using the Instant Pot because everybody keeps asking for more Instant Pot recipes and I love my Instant Pot. So we're gonna use some olive oil for sauteing the onions. If you are oil free, saute in water. Some veggie stock. This is actually, I just refill this from the bulk barn. So, but this is veggie stock, veggie bouillon, whatever you have. Um, some diced tomatoes, 28 ounces or 796 milligram diced tomatoes. Fire roasted, this I like because it's got herbs and spices, but any diced tomato, preferably ones that already have got spices, why not? One can of kidney beans, this is a 19 ounce a fluid ounce can, 540 milliliters. If you prefer other beans, use other beans. If that's what you got in your house, we're using up what we got. Some Italian seasoning. I like to add a little bit of crushed chili flakes in there, but this is optional. Some pasta, whatever pasta you have, but this really works well with, um, I think macaroni pasta or this bow tie pasta. I'm not even gonna try and say far, farfalle, farfalle. Bow tie pasta works really well in a minestrone. And then for veggies, three, these are pretty decent sized carrots, three really sad stalks of celery that are in my fridge and need to get eaten up. This zucchini is way too much. We're gonna use about mm, a quarter of this, maybe half of this. So a small zucchini or half of a medium size, one smallish yellow onion, and three yellow potatoes or really any potatoes that you have. You will also need some minced garlic or about four garlic cloves minced and some bay leaves. So that's what we're using for our minestrone soup. Let me show you how simple this is to make. So I've put my pot to saute. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil in there. If you're not gonna use oil, just saute with water. And if you're not using an instant pot, just use a Dutch oven or a big pot, soup pot on your stove on a medium low heat because we want to saute our onions and our celery. I'm adding in my onion and my celery. That, that's one small medium onion. Full recipe will be down, linked down below in the show notes. One small yellow onion and three-ish ribs of celery. About one cup that I've diced fairly, fairly small of whatever size you want. And we're just going to let that saute for a few minutes until things start to get softened. Once the onion has softened a little bit, just a couple of minutes, now we're going to add in our garlic, zucchini, carrots, and Italian and seasonings. That's the Italian seasoning. And I've got here a half a teaspoon of the chili pepper flakes. Again, this is optional, but I think it adds a nice little kick. So add the spices in first with the garlic, just to toast them a bit. Bloom, I believe is the term that is used to bring out the flavors in the spices. Now let's add the zucchini. I'd say that was about two cups of chopped zucchini. 
half a large or a small one or as much as you want. The nice thing about this soup is that it is so flexible and you can basically use whatever you want. So just because I call it a minestrone doesn't mean that you have to follow my recipe exactly or it has to be traditional. Okay, so we're just going to let that cook for another five minutes or so. I've been trying to use up what's in my pantry, as you guys know, but I am shocked at the price of groceries nowadays. It's insane. But I suppose it's like that everywhere. For those of you who have a garden or live on a farm, I envy you. I'm hoping that next summer I can grow some of my own food as well, though it'll be very small. Okay, so that's just been another few minutes. And now we're going to add um, some other things. I'm going to add four cups of veggie broth. And two cups of water. And use hot water. Might as well speed things up. This does make a lot, but I think that's one of the pluses. But if you don't want it to make this much, just half the recipe. So that's six cups of liquid total. And now we're going to add in the tin of diced tomatoes and our one can of beans that have been rinsed, drained and rinsed. Give that a good stir. Add in your two bay leaves. And just make sure that they're submerged. Now I'm going to take this off saute. And what we're going to do, we're going to give it a taste. I'm not, I don't think I'll add salt until the end because the bouillon broth is, sal is salty. But just give it a taste. Yeah, that's good. But season it however you want. I can taste the, the chili peppers, the chili flakes in there. That's awesome. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, the next step is important that you do this. I'm going to add the potatoes over top. And then I'm going to add the pasta over top of the potatoes. And I'm just going to push the pasta down until it's submerged. But I'm not going to stir it. Because what I don't want is it going to the bottom and sticking. So one cup of pasta. And I'm just going to push it down so it's submerged. Now, this is a full pot, but it's still below the max line. The max line is right here. So I've still got a good three quarters of an inch, which is good. Now that the pasta is submerged, but not stirred, we're going to add our lid. Set it to sealing and click press manual and we want five minutes on high pressure. It will beep here in a second and then it will and then it will come up to pressure. Take a few minutes to come up to pressure. That's why I used hot water and hot water to make the broth. Um, and then it will once it's come up to pressure, it will cook for five minutes. When it is done, those five minutes, it will beep again. And we want to do a manual release, but because there's a lot of liquid in here, you want to do it carefully. Maybe have a paper towel or um, a tea towel or a dishcloth sort of uh, above the little vent, not covering it because you want the steam to escape, but just in case a little bit of spatter comes out um, because this is full but it's gonna make a big batch and you can freeze it if you want. So I'm gonna let this do its thing and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so the it's beeped, it's done. I'm just gonna turn this off because I don't want it to continue to cook. Now we're gonna release the pressure. I'm going to give this 
a little taste to see if it needs salt. Mm. Yep, needs a little salt. But I always prefer to add the salt at the very end because you can't take it out once it's in there. I don't think it needs pepper, but again, this is your recipe. This is what my recipe is just the starting point for you to do yours. So taste it before you set it to cook and season, adjust the seasonings then. Um, I would, I, like I say, I do recommend leaving the salt until the end, but everything is cooked. This is super hearty. Whoops, you will find the bay leaves in there. Do not eat the bay leaves. But this is super hearty, inexpensive to make. Just use the vegetables that you have in your fridge that need using. I'm trying to make that look pretty <laughs> for you. So there you go. Smells really good, tastes delicious. It's gonna be very hot. So I am not, <laughs> just gonna taste the broth. Mm. And the, the vegetables are tender. Give this a try. Let me know if you do. Let me know what you add into your minestrone. If you are Italian, definitely know, let me know what you add into your traditional recipe. I added those chili flakes in there because I like a little bit of zest, a little bit of heat. You don't have to, and you can adjust the, the seasonings however you want. This makes a lot, as you can see, for feeding a family. In this day and age when groceries are so expensive, this is an excellent recipe. Add some crusty bread, homemade. You've got dinner on the table fast, easily, and leftovers for a couple of days, and this will feed some hungry kids. So I hope you guys give this a try. Let me know if you do. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe. Remember, in a world where you can be anything, eat good food, be kind, be brave. I love you, and I'll see you next time.